Hey everyone, this is Mikko and in this video I'm going to be painting Garden in the Sky. One of the most common questions that I get on this channel is how do you have the patience to do all the details in your paintings? And this was more apparent in comments that I have received now that I'm doing way more live streams and people are now more aware that I'm actually spending a lot of time doing these paintings. It's not just a sped up 20 minute thing that I do here by myself, but I'm spending hours and hours and sometimes even days doing these illustrations. The reason why I want to talk about this specific topic regarding Garden in the Sky is because this painting took me so so long to finish. Usually my paintings take about 5 to 8 hours to complete, but this was easily double that time. Yet I would never say that this process at any point tested my patience. It didn't. Not even close. In fact, if anything, I'm kind of like sad that it's over and I don't get to paint it anymore, but more on that later in the end of this video. There was a time that I didn't have the patience to do hard and complicated paintings like this one. And in this video, I want to break down the key components that have changed, not only in the way I paint, but the way that I think about painting. And maybe this can help you to become more patient and enjoy the process a bit more. I want these tips to be as practical as possible, so don't expect these tips to be easy. However, I truly believe that anyone can implement this way of thinking into their work right now, and because the end result reduces stress and anxiety when it comes to creating art, I can say that at least trying and trying again and keep trying until you succeed, I think it's definitely worth it, and this is probably the biggest gift that you can give yourself if you just commit to these few principles. The first tip might not be intuitive considering the title of this video, but it's important for all kinds of painting in general. Composition is way, way more important than the details. One of the hardest things to teach when it comes to art is that time investment plus details does not equal great piece of art. Hopefully this is already obvious to you, but you'd be surprised how many students have been completely like emotionally crushed in a feedback session because they thought spending all week doing details in their painting or homework assignment would impress me. And of course the reason why they are doing the homework is not to impress me, but to get better at painting so that they could enjoy painting and have all the benefits in the rest of their lives. So when giving feedback, I want to be clear that like the students don't need to make me feel happy about their paintings. I just want them to see the elements that they can give feedback on themselves while they are doing the painting. There's a huge difference there. Also, this is not a fun problem for an art teacher to deal with when a student has spent a lot of time making details in their painting and you want to direct them to spend that time more effectively. It seems like in that situation, when somebody has given a lot of effort into creating a piece of art, and in the feedback session you're kind of making what is already has been hard to accomplish that painting that they have spent so much time on, you're just making it seem like it's that much harder because even though they spend all this time on it, you are still giving kind of like harsh feedback on the things that they should have been focusing on and things that they can focus on in the future. So for these reasons, I would recommend that for beginners, details aren't really the thing that you should be focusing on. A good way to avoid getting derailed by shiny objects is using a brush that is too big for details. You can still use 8 hours on a painting, this is not going to make it faster, but for many I would say that that 8 hours would be better spent on composition, mood and visual impact of your piece. And that doesn't mean that the end result will have a lot of details, but you have spent that amount of time designing and redesigning parts of your illustration to achieve the most powerful visual impact that that idea can have. I think part of the disconnect comes from the fact that a lot of people think that painting is somehow a linear process. Painting isn't always a linear process. I might be getting myself into trouble by saying this, but I don't much appreciate tutorials that are a series of images. like. 
you know, step one, do line art, two, value block in, three, color holds, and then finish it with a few color dots highlights. The problem with this type of like tutorial style is that it can be very easy to sell online in a series of images because it looks easy and that's why it seems like an easy thing to sell to students. But this type of formulaic working will result in formulaic work. In reality, you might be three hours in a painting and with the information that you have received through that process, it might be time to trash 40% of your work, because now you have the information to know what the painting doesn't need or what you cannot cram into that painting. And that might seem like you're not working towards a goal, but I think here is something that you can just shift your thinking into how painting process works to make these moments less frustrating for you. A full finished painting is a combination of thousands of small decisions. You or your client might think that they have a perfect, clear vision of what you want, but in reality, when objects are placed into a 2D canvas, they have color and they have volume. Things change and new opportunities present themselves to communicate the concept in the most impactful way possible during that process of painting that idea. If you're not constantly awake to notice these opportunities when they happen and you're just filling in line art with color and you will miss those opportunities to push that visual impact to its maximum potential. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is just filling areas with colors is not painting. This is a job for monkeys. Don't be a monkey, be a painter. For these reasons, I try to work as loosely as possible in the beginning, because it all might change. I might burn down, delete or trash huge portions of my painting, because it's all just part of the process. I don't take it emotionally or get upset with an idea that doesn't work out in practice. And this is the important part, in practice. Remember that ideas are perfect, paintings aren't just ideas, they are real things. They have to fit into 2D canvas, so when you are solving these visual problems, you are going to make compromises and you are going to come up with new ideas that are even better than that initial idea or concept that you had in mind. So when I delete a huge area or if I paint over it, I know that I'm going forward. I now have more information and I've never been so ready as I am now to finish this painting. In fact, out of all the people in the world, I have worked myself into a position through this process where I, out of all the people on the planet, now have the most information to do this task of creating this idea on a canvas in a form of a painting. And I think that is cool and I think it's important to acknowledge that even though you had some ideas that didn't work and you tried some things, now you are in the best position possible to create the painting in the right way that it wants to be painted. So these failures are part of the process. It is progress and painting is always learning. Even though you have painted over 10,000 hours, you haven't painted this specific painting before and you don't know what you need for that painting to succeed. So always be humble and willing to learn and to listen to your painting what it's saying to you. So these things I find extremely rewarding. It's amazing that you have this ability to problem solve constantly and you can get frustrated when your idea doesn't work or you can be surprised and excited to see that where is this going? This is going to be even better than I thought because the painting is communicating with me. And I always find that that interaction is a magical process and you have to be open for it. Otherwise you will just miss it completely. Now that part might be difficult. I know that for a lot of beginner artists that is difficult because when you're very zoomed in and you're working on details, it's kind of emotionally safe. You can control a very small area of the painting because the truth is that no matter how much of a beginner are, just like rendering surfaces, it's pretty easy. So when you're just working on like one tree branch or one rock, you can probably do it and 
the emotional safety in that situation is the tricky part that you have to do the big decisions first so that you can enjoy this part. This is one of the reasons why I leave enjoyable parts like for example for me clouds because I know that they aren't like a skill challenge for me so I leave them as the last thing and I get through all the hard decisions first and that is going to motivate me in the end that I get to the easy and fun part because if I just went for the candy right away and just rendered amazing clouds it wouldn't feel that motivating to do all this like super complicated perspective stuff after that so that's why I try to sort out these things in a way that makes sense and gets me to the finish line as efficiently as possible and if that part was difficult for you then this next part is going to be the real advanced level that is going to be at the same time the most difficult part but also the most beneficial one and that is organize your shame labels properly and i'm going to explain what that means right now when you've worked on a painting for two days and it just doesn't seem to come together there's this expectation of shame that you have to face I'm not excited to keep painting this and the way that it is looking now makes me assume that publishing this piece of art to others would be embarrassing because at this point where I am now it doesn't look like this is going to be a successful art piece. So the shame in this situation is after the piece is published that is the most shameful thing when other people see that your piece is looking less than perfect. And in this regard, because I noticed that this is something that makes me want to quit, I have completely rearranged the order of events that I personally consider shameful. To me, the most embarrassing thing I could possibly do is not finishing. To me, that would be letting down my creativity because I have received this free amazing idea and an adventure, wasting away the time that I have already committed to the painting also would be just terrible and even though my audience would never know if I dropped a painting into the trash bin, I would know myself and I would think of it like stealing from my viewers and people who follow my work. I would be taking away that painting from those people and denying the access to this world that creativity gave us like my responsibility that Mikko, you can paint the doorway to this world for other people to see and if I close it, I will not just close it for myself but I will close it for everybody and I think that is like really shameful thing and I would never let that happen like I'm actually getting goosebumps when I'm saying that it just sounds so terrible that I would never let you guys down that way and I would never let myself down that way and I definitely definitely out of all things I would not disrespect my creativity that way that I would shut down an idea and close the door for everybody also myself and for my creativity and I will never let that happen it's not okay that is what I consider to be way more shameful than me trying to open that door with the best of my ability even if I can't do my part in this collaboration in the best way possible at least this task was assigned to me for all I know I'm the only chance that this idea has to come into the real world so even if it's not perfect at least it's real at least it's not just an idea that I have a great idea for a painting that doesn't matter anything if it doesn't exist if I can't pull it out from this world of ideas into this physical world of ours because I have changed the way that I think about quitting it's just not an option to me anymore sure some paintings are super challenging to finish like for example this one was super challenging to finish sometimes I'm required to learn new things to get to the end but at least I'm not making this learning process even harder by having this extra option to consider in my head all the time and I'll give you an example how this would work what color should I use for these walls? Also, should I start a new painting? Where do I plant all the flowers in this garden? By the way, should I delete this entire file? I mean, like, if you keep having this option of, like, exiting at every phase, it's just, like, brain trash creating more and more friction into this 
process all the time. I think this would be obvious that like if you have this extra option to just like bail from the idea whenever it gets difficult, of course you will at some point. You will have moments of weakness when the challenge just seems too great to face. But if walking out on that idea is not even an option, you're kind of forced to figure out, you're forced to grow as an artist, you will learn new skills, and you will get to that end result. And I think just not having that extra brain crash of, should I quit this painting? Am I not good enough of a painter to create this idea into a painting? Who cares? The idea came to you, so it's your job. That's how I think about it. Also, if you get rid of all of that brain trash, you can just focus on those visual problem-solving things, and that is way more enjoyable. That seems like it's fun work, it's fun to figure out solutions to visual problems, but constantly thinking that like I need to keep going, <laughs> that seems really difficult, and I would rather have the fun route. So I just have to make this conscious decision of not having this mind trash at all, because I know as a fact that it will make it harder to enjoy the painting. No thanks, I choose the fun way of painting. And after all that, I want to bring to focus just how important it is to be present in the moment when you're painting. Don't think about the audience and how they are going to react to this. You are there right now, and if you are not present for the painting process, you are going to miss it. This piece started out as a vague idea of wouldn't it be fun to spend few days in a flying garden? Because I started painting, I made it possible for myself to have that trip and to have this amazing experience. For this piece, the process was like building a house. The garden stuff came pretty late into the whole process. Just like when building a house, you put the plants in last. While I was putting together the biggest building blocks, I got to have all kinds of interesting decisions like where to put the lawn and how the little pond in the backyard has an artificial square shape because it's easier to build rooms around it in the engine room of this garden. For safety, the bottom of this ship has canvas materials that are painted white, so the garden is harder to spot from the ground. And if you look past the clouds, what seems like a very small detail in the distance, all these houses on the ground are along longer and thicker roads, and they radially gather near a small town, near the middle. We don't see the town because it's hidden from view, but the direction of the roads is decided by that point on the ground. And I know where that town is, because I was here. I spent a week in this garden in the sky, and I didn't endure the time it took to create the details. I enjoyed the time it took to create the details. When I had done all the big composition decisions, and I painted all the walls around the hull, when I switched on the lights to the lampposts and added a pinwheel to the highest tower, I didn't feel like I had somehow suffered through hours of painting. I was there in the flying garden. How many get to travel like this? Are you kidding me? Like, grateful is the word that feels more appropriate. I'm grateful that I got to be here. And when I look at this painting now, it feels like a memory of a great trip that I was just by myself. And by opening this door, I hope that you guys get to be on this trip as well. Thank you for watching this video. I want to say that I have now added my prints to InPrint. I have put the description in the link below. And this is the shop that I will put all my prints from now on. Because the previous print shop wasn't giving me any money on the sales of the prints. So I won't be using that anymore. Because I put a lot of work into these prints and I think I deserve to get paid for this work. But if you don't want to buy any prints, that's okay, I will be back here on this channel with more videos like this one. Go and paint fun things and enjoy the travels that creativity can take you on. Bye!